Hi everybody, it's Joni Young here. Welcome back to my channel for another painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a close-up of a bumblebee on a flower. I'm going to really have fun with color today in this one. I hope you guys are excited to learn how to paint this. If you are, let's go ahead and get started by going over the colors and the brushes canvas that I'm using today. I've got titanium white, luminous violet, pink, orange, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, Mars Black and Cobalt Blue. I have the following brushes here as well. 14 Filbert, a number three round, a one inch mop brush and a quarter inch dagger brush. I'll be painting this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. And we're gonna go ahead with the very first step. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of water to my towel here and I'm gonna just apply it over the canvas. I'm just going to get the canvas a little damp first, that way it'll take my paint a lot easier. The first brush I'm going to be using for this is my 14 filbert brush. What I want to do is add a lot of the darker colors. I'm just going to be blocking in colors at this point, darker ones, and then we're going to work our way up to our brightest, most vivid colors. So I'm going to use this filbert brush, take just a little bit of water. Even though I've got water on the canvas, I want to moisten the bristles so um, the paint doesn't ruin the brush. And I'm going to start off with my violet here. And I'm just going to start going kind of in diagonal lines and then bringing them around. take a little bit of cobalt blue and I'm going to just start coming around creating the center of the flower bring it up and over so we're painting a, a really big flower right close up so that we can really make that the backdrop and make the bumblebee in more details and make it the focus of our painting. I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of the blue now. more of that beautiful violet. So because I'm going to be using a lot of orange and yellow in this flower, it's nice to have some complementary colors um, to really bring it all together. And that's where the blue and the violet and all these shades of uh, purple that we're creating will really help to set off and complement all the orange and peach and yellow and if you're not sure about what complementary colors uh, are and what goes together you can just google a uh, color wheel online or purchase them inexpensively at art stores or online as well i'm going to dry this layer off and then i'm going to start coming in with a little bit of burnt sienna and some of my yellow ochre now that this is all dried off, we're gonna start coming in with the next colors. And I'm gonna be using my dagger brush. I'm gonna get it a little bit wet and I'm gonna take some burnt sienna and a little bit of yellow ochre. Take a little bit of orange as well. Maybe a little bit of pink too. It's all about having fun with color today. I'm just going to come around the circle here. This is the center of the flower. I'm 
take those colors again. between the petals. So really just adding some lines here. Okay, let's take those colors again. A little bit of water. And I'm just loosely brushing over sort of flat with my brush. This is so we can not completely cover up all the colors that we have underneath. And it gives it more of a looser, abstract feel. See how pretty all the colors look together? They really set each other off. Take a little bit of cadmium yellow. A little bit of water. And I'll take those colors, orange, pink, yellows, a little bit of water, bring in some cadmium. Just start adding a little bit of white as well and pull in a few lines. So I'm never making just one solid color. This way you get so many different shades. And just a little bit of pink and yellow here over the blue with, the, with a little teeny bit of white in there.
Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush and I'm going to take some light and I'm going to just go over very lightly, brush over those colors that are still a little wet so we can make some softer shades. really important to add this white if you don't want your painting to dry too dark. Okay, I'm not going to take a little bit of my lemon yellow with white and add a little bit of this I just got these little ones here on the side as well. And don't be afraid to add a little less white and more yellow for a nice bright pop of color. We can always go back to that after and add more if we need to. I rinse my brush out. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take my felt brush. A little, a little bit of water, some burnt sienna, and a little bit of black. And I'm going to start very lightly just dragging my brush around. So I've got it loaded on the bottom. We're going to add a little bit more shadows on this side here, little darker patches before we come in with our little round spots for our flower. Get a little bit of this orange on here with my yellow, burnt sienna, and black. I'm just going to Dab and kind of wiggle. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just add a whole bunch of little dots. I might speed this up a little bit because I'm going to be painting quite a few of them and um, just going over the same exact a brush brush technique, just leaving little dots. So you can either use the end of your brush for this or like the end of the handle or a Q-tip or the end of uh, your little round brush. So there's a few different ways of applying them. I'll show you first with the um, end of the brush here. And I'm gonna be taking, you wanna make sure you have like a little ball of paint on the end of your brush. So I'm gonna be taking some of my uh, yellows and white and because I'm gonna be resting my hand here to do this, I need to make sure this is all dried off first. I'm gonna have paint all over my hand. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this side so that I always have dry area to place my hand. And all we're gonna do is start inside the circle and add dots really close together. So as the paint, I was able to get about four done there nicely. And you'll need to Reload your brush 
You don't want to push too hard or you're, or you're going to make them too big. I'm going to try to make them all the same size. And this is going to be just one of those really relaxing stages of the painting. Super easy, just making dots and going all around. Now you can make different patterns with them if you want. Um, I'm just going to keep it really simple and basic. Now I'm going to turn my brush over and show you how you can do the same thing. And maybe you'll find this easier. I'll just, I like to give you guys options. So just load the end of the handle. Dab. I think they'll be a little bit smaller if you do that. Do that. Um, do it this way. I like personally <clears throat> using the bristle part of the brush for this, but I've seen other artists um, turn the brush over. And like I said, you can also use a Q-tip, but I find the Q-tips tend to soak up the paint. They're very porous. So this is just what works best for me. Now I'm going to use a little bit more white than anything. That way I know it's going to dry uh, nice and bright. And then when it's all dry, I might come over and show you guys how you can glaze to make it really um, bright. I'm just going to start adding the rest of my little dots here. So yeah, as I do this, like this is going to take a, a little bit of time, so I'm probably going to speed it up a little bit. Okay, so I've just finished up the dabs and the dots here, or the little seeds inside the flower, or the center of the flower. And I'm just going to go back and add a little bit more white to some of them before I completely dry this off. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to um, glaze over once it's all dry with some colors. We're going to use some of the orange, pink, and the neon yellow. Now, even though we're going to have our bee cover up some of this, I still wanted to add all the dots because I'm not really sure where our bee is gonna be. <laughs> so, and I find it really relaxing adding all these little dots. Kind of forces you to slow down a little bit and calm your breathing, calm your mind. It's very meditative. Okay, so I will completely dry this off. Actually, just one more step before we dry this off. I want to come over here with a little bit more 
of my white as well. I'm gonna use the Filbert brush. I'm gonna take some white and I'm just gonna add it to a few areas on the petals. All those other colors will still be there. We're just gonna add to them. By adding this bit of white here, we'll be able to get some nice, bright, luminous lemon yellow to really show up. Okay, so we want this part of the flower, the flower itself to be just a little bit um, out of focus in comparison to our bumblebee. So some of these are a little bit thicker when I apply the paint and they're not 100% dry. So I'm expecting when I come and glaze over this to pick up some of that, but that's gonna kind of make it look a little more abstract and out of focus. So I'm excited for this next step. And I'm just gonna be using um, my filbert brush to add the glaze over. I'm gonna start with the bright lemon yellow. And my brush is just a little bit damp from rinsing it out. And I'm just gonna come over and I might need a little bit of, just a tiny bit of water in here to help release some of that out. But look at that color. So I'm gonna add some yellow to a few areas. And then I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of all of the colors. I'm going to take a little bit of water again with the yellow. So we're just going to very lightly, don't press too hard. So we've got some nice yellow on there. The next color I'm gonna take is some orange. I'm just gonna add that in with the yellow. And I'm gonna come around here. Look how pretty it looks with that magenta or the violet. I'm gonna take a little bit of pink and yellow, make orange. As soon as I'm kind of running out. And we're going to bring this over some of the petals as well. A little bit of water. There we go. So you can see I'm starting to pick up some of that white. But that's going to help make it look a little bit blurrier and out of focus. Oh, it's so fun. I hope you guys are really excited to use color for this painting. I'm telling you, there's something really healing about color. I've been doing a lot of limited palette paintings lately, and um, I like to do that and kind of go back and forth from using a lot of color to minimal limited palettes. It's really fun. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of my uh, burnt sienna here with yellow and the rest of the pink. I'm gonna add that over some of the areas here. A little bit more yellow and pink again. 
little bit of water. And now we're ready to start coming in with our bumblebee. I'm so excited for this. I'm going to be using the filbert brush again for the main shape of the body. And I'm going to start with some black. And I'm going to add um, the bee right about here. I'm going to add the front part of the head. So just like a crescent moon kind of half circle like that. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to take my dry mop brush and gently, I'm going to do this again with a little bit of water on it. And we're going to catch the end and lightly pull with a brush like that. make it kind of fuzzy and fluffy. Okay, then I'm going to add, I'm going to skip a little area there. Then we're going to come in here and add sort of a circle. And we're going to add all this black inside, covering up that part of the flower. We're going to leave another space. I'm just going to gently come in here, a light little flick. Leave a little skinny space like this and then come in again and make this a little narrower. I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'm going to add a little shine right here. Now as that dries, I might add a little bit more. Or you can just use very little pressure. And add a little dab there, and a little dab there. Where there's kind of got a little bald spot. <laughs> okay, for our next color, clean brush, we're going to take some burnt sienna. A little bit of white and a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to dab it in here in between the black areas. I'm going to go over to my mop brush again. Gently flick, flick, flick. We'll flick a little bit this way too, and then a little bit this way, so we get a little bit of that black in there. Pick up a little bit more. Okay, and now we're going to add some in here. And then a little bit of yellow ochre, white, and cadmium. And we're going to add the lighter part 
down here. And then right here. Okay, I'm gonna take my brush again and I'm gonna lightly pull, pull, pull and flick. Off of the black into the browns. And so on and so forth. Just a light little blend. And this is just one of those really easy ways. Put a little bit of yellow and white on there. One of those easy ways of adding fluffy fur. Okay, now we're going to get this area here. It's going to have a little bit more white on it. So I'm just going to gently pull and flick. Now adding more white. Okay, so I'm going to take some more yellows and white and I'm going to just lightly flick for some more little highlights. We're going to start right in the middle here of the brown and yellow ochre area. I'm going to take a little bit of black now. And add just a little bit more there. And a few little ones that kind of just stick out here. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do before I add the final highlights to the end is I want to come in and add shadow, a shadow around the body of our bee. And I'm going to use my round brush. You can use any brush you feel comfortable with, whether it be the dagger we used earlier or the filbert brush. And I'm going to take my burnt sienna, a little bit of black. I'm just going to bring it over here, make sure that it's not too thick. And I'm going to come around and use some of this pink and orange in here as well. And just lightly 
over here. Just gonna dab around the spots very loosely to give them a little bit more depth. Now I've got a really cool brush that I didn't um, show at the beginning of the video, but I wanna show you guys now. I'm gonna demonstrate how to use um, an even tail filbert brush. There you can see it better like that. So it's like a filbert brush, but it's had sections snipped out of it. So it looks kind of like a rake. And I also have a fan brush that actually looks like a rake. And it's the same kind of thing. Um, but this I'll have a little bit more control with for the final hairs and little highlights before we start our wings. So I'm gonna get my brush wet and I'm gonna pull into a little bit of white and I'm just going to come and add this a little bit thicker but this will give us the spaces that we need you can do this with the mop brush too but I just want to show you guys and introduce different brushes that I think are amazing and helping you learn how to apply these brush strokes with them so that you can learn how to paint hair and fur. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of the yellow ochre along with the white. I also wanna add a little bit of cadmium yellow. Get a little bit more yellow in here. So what happens is that I'm just taking a, a little bit of water here. What happens is the acrylic dries a little bit darker. So it's normal to lose your highlights after the first application once it dries and then have to come back and add some more. I'm going to be a little bit heavier with my yellow in here. I think this bumblebee is looking pretty cute and furry and fluffy already. Okay, then I'm going to go into the pink and orange and yellow, kind of like burnt sienna. And just placing my pinky here to help guide me. Gently add a little bit of this in between the black and the yellow where we added more of the burnt sienna at the beginning and then we're going to have just a little area in here tiny little area in between the white and the black okay so i'm going to just add a little bit more um, a little bit more white before we work on our wings. Tiny bit of water to thin that out just for this little area in here. catch a little bit there on the side and then I'm gonna just I'm gonna even just I'm gonna use this brush along with some white you can use any brush that you want a little bit of white and blue just go over those little highlights again because I'm using a lot of color and enjoying color in this painting I'm gonna be a little heavier with the blue now and just add that there now we're not going to see the um, legs of 
the bumblebee we're just it's it's we're not able those aren't going to be visible in this painting so we're going to leave those out and just start working on our wings now the wings i'm going to be painting with um, the dagger brush if you don't have any brushes just use any brush that you feel comfortable with and i'm going to start off with a little bit of white and blue And I'm going to start the first one here. It's going to start right here. So I'm just going to add little dabs and it's going to come in here. So I'm going to come out, create kind of like an almond shape. And then we're going to come up. Like a butterfly wing. Take some extra white in with that. And all we're going to do, a little bit more white, kind of just dry brush over little patches like this, little lines. It'll show up a lot more when we come in with our black, but let's move on to the next one and leave that for a little bit. We've got a little bit of blue in there and this other one's going to come just there. That's a little a little bit more visible. Like I said, we're going to add the black lines pretty soon and then add a few more highlights. So we're going to come here and add the wing coming up here. Add a little kind of raindrop shape right there. And then bring another one down that's bigger. Give me a little bit of water on my brush. We're going to come from here straight down and then bring it over. Add a few little shimmers on the wing there with some of that white and blue. I'm going to rinse my brush out, loosen off a little bit of that, take extra blue this time, add a little bit of that. Okay, now we're going to take some black, water it down, thin it out, and I'm going to start up here, and we're going to bring it all the way down to the body, and we're going to add a few little lines. And just feel free with it. Make your own pattern.
I'm going to do the same thing here. Remember to thin your paint out with a little bit of water so that it makes it easier. Just add those little lines and brush strokes. I'm going to add a little bit more of my black just around the back here, thinned out for shadow, okay? You don't want it to be too solid. And then I'm going to add a little bit here for a shadow by the wing or from the wing. That's even a little bit too heavy, so I'm going to take some of it off. I'm going to use my round brush now in white and I'm going to add some brighter highlights. You want to keep these looking shimmery. And transparent. So you're not going to add white over all of them. We're just going to pick a few spots. And a little bit of blue in there. And there's just a little bit of blue around here as well. Just going to add a little bit of blue here. A little around here for some more of a shadow color. I'm going to take a little bit of black. just a little bit there and a little bit here okay so now I'm going to add some more highlights using my Zen filbert A little bit of water there on there if you have to. Take some more of the yellow and the white. And take a little bit more black and we're going to go this way. Barely touch so we need a little bit of water on there to release it. I'm 
it's like using a bunch of liner brushes. A little bit too much water on there, so I'm going to catch these little drips. And go back over to my round white. We're going to pick a few spots to add a brighter shimmer to. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit more. The rest of my, it's kind of drying up, but I can still thin it out with some water. Not over the shadow area. Just glazing over with my lemon yellow. Take a tiny bit of cadmium yellow. Just add a little bit right over the burnt sienna, a little bit over here, and a little bit right here. Okay, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this one. This is my very first bumblebee. And I want to wish you guys all the best. Take care, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!